the first moment I saw this remarkable English late 18th century embroidery captured my imagination for its beauty, mystery, and workmanship. It depicts a beautiful woman seated beneath a large gnarled and leafy tree within an idyllic pastoral landscape. When it first came into the collection, I hoped to find the identity of the lovely woman sitting so primly and self-possessed with a shepherd's crook resting on her arm. Through research, I finally found that the embroidery was based upon a painting by English painter William Hamilton, but the painting's title, The Lady as Shepherdess, still does not name the subject. In this case, the term lady is somewhat telling, however, for this woman was obviously not a real shepherdess, but a person of some wealth and standing, perhaps even aristocrat. Paintings featuring aristocratic men and women in the guise of humble country folk were part of the cult of the pastoral, the fashionable rage in late 18th century indulged in by such notables as Marie Antoinette, in which the idle rich imagined themselves enjoying the so-called simple life as milkmaids and shepherds away from the pressures and the demands of court and high society. As is usual with such needleworks, the face and hands of the lady are painted rather than embroidered. However, in this case, these features are painted on paper and then attached to the embroidery. The miniaturist responsible for this was identified on the original paper covering the back of the frame, J. Harris, possibly J. Harris the Elder, a painter active in London between 1797 and 1814, or more likely J. Harris the Younger, who was known to have painted miniature portraits. The name of the sitter, however, is again not included in the notation. That the sitter is not truly a shepherdess is most obvious from her fashionable attire. The flowing dress with coral sash gathered at the lower back, the wide-brimmed hat, and even the shoes, elegant low-heeled pumps, are completely appropriate for any real work, much less one that required the herding of animals. The lady's clothing as well as the setting are rendered not with paint but with needle and thread and with amazing skill. The embroiderer has manipulated the wool and the silk threads by color and stitch choice to create the flat, smooth quality of the silk, the fluid folds of drapery, the texture of the grass and the shadow of rocks. This is in contrast with the bolder embroidery of the woolly sheep and the looped stitches used to give dimension to the trees. The embroiderer was most likely another anonymous woman. I find it amazing that neither she nor the sitter may ever be identified. Fortunately, this work remains as mute testimony to their lives.